Welcome in to Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park at our audio podcast studio. Glad to have you with us for Titans tonight, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, the official bank of the Tennessee Titans. Pinnacle Financial Partners tells you all about Titans banking at titansbanking.com. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Just where you'd expect it to you be. You can find all of, <laughs> all of Pinnacle's winning plays right there, titansbanking.com, Pinnacle Financial Partners. Member FDIC. Keith Bullock is here. Yes, I am. Hello, Mr. Monday Night. How was your trip with the family to California? It was great. Nice fall break. The weather was actually complimentary to what it was today. So I got like, you know, all weekend and great weather when you come back to Nashville. This is like the ideal weather for life. It's like, a for little. Me. Like up it was a little warm. Little warm. Eh, little warm. I don't think so. I I'm love also it. wearing a very thick sweater yeah, nah. today. I yeah. didn't dress She's for the got weather. Got the mock well. neck on. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do great. <laughs> I mean, it's, it wasn't even that chilly in the morning. Like, like last week, it was a little, little more brisk. Yes. It is late October. I hear you. I just. I but asked. you know what happens is the whole thing is it just turns off. Oh yeah. I know. One it day it's stops. 74. Oh, it's about to happen. And the next day it's 48, and it gets and you dark. Never at, go back. It gets dark at 3:30. I know. I'm not trying to wish away the warmth I because I have. enjoy the warmth, but I dressed very inappropriately right, get today. Your, get get your lotion ready. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> today today was eventful. It was. Yeah. Um, How'd woke, your morning start off? <laughs> well, it, <laughs> it started off, uh, I woke up. I usually get up a little earlier than what I did, and I woke up. I wakened, <laughs> and my phone was kind of buzzy. It does mm-hmm. the thing where the, the screen's on and everything. I thought, well, that's odd. Yeah. And so I walked over, and the ever-reliable Rhett Bryan from Titans Radio had forward me, forwarded me uh, something from Twitter. Mm-hmm. Adam Schefter had reported that the Tennessee Titans had traded DeAndre Hopkins to the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. I was not shocked. Really? No. Yeah. No. I mean, that's kind of what happens. I audibly responded when I saw the the notification that the trade had, that that's what was going on, that Adam Schefter that they reported were that. That they yes. were talking about it. And I responded out loud. And of course, when you have toddlers, anytime that you respond <laughs> before like the lights come on, somebody has done something in their right. bed that's a problem. So my husband was like, what? What's, who's, who, what's going on? I was like, oh, no, it's a trade, yep. <laughs> which is a much better alternative than a crying kid. <laughs> so the report at that point was that they still had to agree on the amount of money that the Chiefs were going to pay on the remaining contract and the amount of money that the Titans were going to pay. It was reported that compensation was a fifth-round pick that could go to a fourth-round pick if DeAndre Hopkins plays 60% of the Chiefs' offensive snaps Mm -hmm. and if the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl. Yes. And so – I, I look, Jim White and I were working on it, and we looked at it. He played 177 snaps for the Titans in the first six games. So he played 47% of all snaps. Now, he was coming back from injury. He didn't do anything in training camp after the first day. Right, yes. So he was coming back from injury. He didn't fully know every nuance of the offense because yeah. of all the time that he missed, and he was not around a lot in the spring, which – Veterans sometimes aren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, that's the way it works. Yeah. So it will be a step up for him to play 60% of the snaps. But with where the Chiefs are at receiver right now, they're probably going to need him to. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes needs a friend. (laughs) He does need a friend. And um, as we saw last year, or since DeAndre Hopkins has been here, look, he's been a consummate pro. Um you know, for someone to come in later in their career to come to a new situation, um, you know, outside looking in, it seems, you know, he's been a pro. He showed up, you know, when he first got here. They said he doesn't practice. He practiced. He, he did. did everything that, um, you know, he proved all everyone wrong that was had anything to say about him. So um, it was, you know. As a former Titan, it was great to have a player of DeAndre Hopkins' caliber, 
you know, here with this team and to, you know, help um, some of these young guys in, in the way. And, and, you know, he kind of he embraced that, you know, older veteran role. So, um, you know, now it's time. And he, he left some examples, too. So now you just hope those examples he left. You know, you need other veterans that are here to step up and, you know, take that leadership role because that's a void. You know, sure. he, he's leaving a void in that locker room. His presence was felt daily, um, you know, so it's one of those things, even with Ernest Jones, he wasn't here that long. But, you know, his presence was felt. He came in. He was one of the guys. Mm -hmm. That's how it is, especially when, you know, I'll, I'll never forget. Um, man, it was one of those. It could have been 06 or something. Whatever. Tony Brown just got here, and we were playing the Indianapolis Colts, and we weren't that, we weren't that good. And maybe Tony Brown got here on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and – you know, we just had a mentality. We were always going to fight, and I think we were down, whatever it was. And, you know, Tony, I just remember it was a TV timeout. He's like, okay, I like it. I can play with you boys. You know, he just got here, like, with four days ago. I was like, MF, you ain't got no choice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're in it. You know, so it's almost like the same thing with Ernest. That's just how it works. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Even um, who's the young man that got here today? Um, the Jerome Lumber Baker. Jerome Baker. Look, he's going to get It's like, look, we're one in five, bro. And there ain't, like nobody likes one in five anywhere. So you get in. Get in where you fit in. Get in this foxhole, and we're going to see what type of guy you are. You know, I think this is the time of the year. Well, and in this position, I've been one in five. I've been zero oh and six. I've been one in four. Like, and this is when the the red gloves come off, and you got to put the black gloves on because <laughs> you know it's you know nothing's cute anymore. You know nothing's cute, and as uh. You know, someone, I was locked into my contract, so it's like I, I'm a sore loser, and I I never slighted myself because other people, like, had done it up until that point. You know, as an athlete, anything you do, I'm sure we've all sitting here and been slighted to them, and then you prove everyone wrong. So that's what these guys are, are involved in now, the Titans as a team. So I don't know who the person or the people are, but um, and I don't even know what's going on within you know the locker room. I like once in one of the years, we were losing. Um, you know I remember some of the younger guys couldn't wait for practice to be over to come into their locker room to restart their game in Mario Kart because that's the, that's what was going <laughs> on playing video games. And, yeah, all right. So what I have to do? That's when. You know, you've seen things in the past. I remember we weren't playing well my second year here. And Eddie Robinson, he unplugged all the video games in the locker room and took the ping pong paddles and the pool sticks because we're here to work. We're not here right. to mm -hmm. go play video games. We're not here. You can do all that stuff when you get out of the building. But here we have to figure out as a team, coaching, players. Coaches give the assignment. They instruct us on what to do. Now as players, we spend a lot of time together. Are we all after practice rushing to get out of here to get to our respective um, after work places that we just chill and, you know, decompress? Or are we going to go in here and watch this film for 40 minutes and figure out how we're going to get better on defense, how, help our young guys that might not understand? Or we might have a guy that has to play this week and he doesn't know really – I'm not confident, so you need to come in here with me and learn what to do. And, you know, those are the things, those are, those are the foundations. And I'm not saying they're not doing those things. I'm just saying based on my experience being in these situations, yeah, it sucks, but ain't nobody coming to save you. Um, you know, A.J. Brown ain't coming back in here. Uh, Steve McNair, Eddie, nobody. Right. <laughs> King Henry ain't coming back. So it's on everybody in this building right now to um, come together and figure it out. Go ahead. When you walk into a new locker room, especially in the middle of the year, especially one that it is in the situation that the Titans find themselves in right now, is it harder to find your place because there's so many things that are, A, maybe already established, this is how we do things, this is kind of how the roles shake out, or is it easier because there's clearly some things that are still kind of shaken? I think, honestly, and, and it's easier because you're being bounced around. Obviously, um, you still have some type of value, but the team you're on didn't feel you had that. So now you're in a new situation. 
that team's welcoming you and if they're putting you in the role that they expect you to perform, I, I would – you know, I would relish that because this is um, the type of profession, professional sports. You're only going to get so many different opportunities. So if they didn't think he could get it done in Seattle, then I'm coming here to be the man. You got to have that mentality, especially if you're a starter in this league, you know, because the next guy wants your spot. So if look, we had it like it goes back to college for me, like it was one of those things like you could bring the baddest person on the planet to compete for me with me at my position and he's not going to beat me out. It's just not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I think that um, a lot of guys have similar mentalities when it comes to that. So I think when you come into a new situation, you don't know anybody, you might know a couple people, but you want to you wanna show and prove. You want to show and prove that you belong here, they made the right pick and that whatever, we're one of five, but I want to help us get the first win, our second win. So I... When I walked in the building, I stopped by a colleague's office to talk about the report, which is what it still is right now, officially, yes. because yes, yes, there yes. is no official yet. Nope. <laughs> um, the, the, the report of the DeAndre Hopkins trade. So we visited for a few minutes. We talked about work and some other things going on. I started back toward my little area, and I stopped by Amy's office, and she looked up from her computer, and she goes, We've traded Ernest Jones. It's being reported we've traded Ernest Jones. And I, I thought at first, I thought you were kidding with me. I thought. That would have been a very funny joke. I, but you were kind of, you had this bizarre look on your face. And then the report comes out that the Titans uh, have dealt Ernest Jones to Seattle in exchange for linebacker Jerome Baker and a fourth round pick. Correct. And so. Uh, again, neither of these trades have been made official yet because things have to happen for them to to finish. And the mechanics of these things, sometimes uh, a contract has to be rewritten so somebody can be dealt. Mm -hmm. And when a contract is rewritten, a player has to be on the roster for a specific period of hours or whatever afterwards. Or... You could be holding off until somebody passes a physical because you're like, okay, we don't want to get in this mess and make all these comments and then so-and-so get somewhere and fail a physical or so-and-so comes here and fails a physical. So if you read the injury report today and you're a bit of a cynic, <laughs> you saw... We don't want you to be cynical. Well, but I, I understand, that, but... So you saw Jalen Duncan, hamstring, did not practice. And then you saw DeAndre Hopkins, rest, did not practice. <laughs> Ernest Jones, rest, did not practice. They have to be listed because yeah, they are because on. because they didn't practice. And they're on your roster. Correct. They, they are still on the roster. Uh, Calvin Ridley, foot, did not practice. Jeffrey Simmons, rest, did not practice. Legereus Sneed, quad, did not practice. Julius Chestnut, calf, limited. Keandre Colburn, knee, limited. Good that he's back out there. Mm -hmm. um, Will Levis, right shoulder, limited. Tajay Spears, hamstring, limited. Kenneth Murray, shoulder, full. Cedric Gray, shoulder, full. Quick call out. Jeffrey Simmons' rest is not like... DeAndre Hopkins no. and Ernest Jones' no, rest. Rests. He always gets a rest he day on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. I don't want anybody to That's hear right. that and go, well, wait like, a minute. Well, like for Detroit, Taylor Decker, their tackle, Graham Glasgow, their guard, uh, Levi Onzerike, a defensive lineman, um, Frank Ragnow, their center, all rest. Yeah, old all, man days, all, respectfully. Not, I mean, not, respectfully. I said it. Old man days? Yeah. It's an old man. He gets a day. Yeah. It's an old man day. Uh, back to Deion. Am I wrong? I never got him, but yeah, I, I look. <laughs> hey, some people need him. See? Um, DeAndre Hopkins was very kind to us. He was delightful. And so it, I'm, I'm appreciative of what a professional he was to us uh, because he's a legendary figure. He is a guy with 57 more catches, will reach 1,000. Mm -hmm. And he, he, you know, he'll probably get him in Kansas City. Um, 
So whatever, you know, it was for whatever period of time he was here, which I guess was about 16 months total. 16 months, always a Titan. He was in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, he bought in. He, he was in. He likes Nashville. Would not surprise me if he doesn't come back here when he's through playing, whenever that is. But, um, you know, we've had some veterans come through who've just been a bit standoffish, and you could just sort of tell. And, and you know, that's whatever. That's kind of how the business works. Yeah. He That's was he was not that way with us. And so, I mean, I don't mean to speak for you, Amy, but I was... No, I co-sign. I, I was very, very impressed. And I, I also understand, too, why people are just emotionally disappointed in this. Because you, you think about... You think about with him... He comes in and he catches 75 balls for over 1,000 yards. And you see the great game he had with Will Levis against Atlanta. And some of the things that he does, he played so well in the Monday night game that the team won a year ago. And, you know, so many people have seen him in our division for years, play well against the Titans. They were excited to have him here. He's a big name during a period of time where things are not going very well. And so – Numerous people bought his jersey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when you buy someone's jersey, man, you're putting a ring on it. Yeah. As a fan. Yeah, that's a great way to describe you, it. You are putting a ring on it because you're either going to the pro shop or you're going online. You're shelling out some serious bucks. Mm-hmm. And you're saying, I'm a fan of this team and I'm so in with this. I'm buying into this player that I want to put his jersey and his name on me and in particular, I want to show that when I walk around. Mm -hmm. And from that standpoint, whether – listen, I was not surprised by the trade. I I mean, even when I wasn't very awake and I saw Rhett's – Text message. I, I was not surprised. They have value. Those players That's have exactly value. right. Mm-hmm. These, these things happen, and in these moments, too, where a guy's on an expiring contract and you are where you are, and it's, it's just a moment where – and this draft, by the way, looks to be a back-end heavy draft because all of the guys who had the extra COVID time, it's up. Mm-hmm. So this does not appear to be a great top-end draft – but the bottom of the draft appears to be fantastic. So getting extra fours and extra fives, it makes total sense. Yep. But for those people who don't initially go to that mentally, they're, they're not, their initial reaction is not pragmatic. I see you. I, I see you, and your feelings shouldn't be ignored in these moments ever because you're the real thing too. You care, you care about this team, this community, the stadium, you buy your tickets, you, you watch on TV, you listen to Titans radio. And so while, while we can be pragmatic, I mean, two things can be true at once. Mm-hmm. This does appear to be a solid deal for the Titans, but people's genuine disappointment is because they're a fan of the team and they lost one of their guys, one of whom – you buy his jersey. Keith Bullock, we bought your jersey. My daughter had your jersey. She still, I think she still has it in her closet. Aww, um, that's a big deal. But those players are such a connection. And no franchise in any sport should ever ignore what that means. Their feelings on a day like today must be acknowledged. Because they are so important to the lifeblood of, of what you do. So I just, I just wanted to say to all the folks who were, who were hurt today, I see you. I mm-hmm. hear you. We I, I understand. We love sports, too. We love the team, too. The reason we do this, and Keith does it, too, even though he's a former player, but this is great. We, we love this mm-hmm. and, and being a fan. Some days being a fan – is harder than others. Yeah. And if you bought a 10, if you liked having the living legend on your team, if you just thought that was really cool, I got it. We get it. 
We, we understand. Get, now you got a vintage throwback. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> Yo, just his, hang on to it for his, a minute. His look, who we've, we've had Julio Jones. Yep. We've had Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins has been the best out of all of those. He, mm-hmm. he was. At, oh, well, Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson, yeah. who caught the touchdown at Detroit. Yeah. In How timely. T- in 2016. I, I just have to say, that like guy. my sentiments are exactly the same. I started off, but not as eloquently said and spoken as you, and I didn't take the fans into consideration as <laughs> no, much. No, but, but, I, but I, I, I think both things are true, and the people on social media who are pointing out that a deal is a good deal or that the Ernest Jones deal is – I mean, I never met Ernest Jones. You did. He's very nice. I, mean, okay. he, it's, I believe yeah, you. It's an, another one that's kind of like, oh, man, yeah, okay. I really like okay. him. He was here for like, like three weeks, right? No, he uh, was six. longer than that, long enough to be friends. Um, no, yeah, they he, were, She interviewed him. Very it, nice it, guy. We'll never get to use it now, but – Yeah, uh, <laughs> we should send it to Seattle. They can uh, we use can use send it. It, it was to a Seattle. great interview. And then they could have somebody <laughs> drop in a woman's voice every time you say – I'm so glad you're here in Seattle. In Seattle. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I might not have said Titans ever. They yeah, could probably use they it. They cut away. Seahawks. Yeah, it was pretty evergreen. Get that footage <laughs> up. Get that footage <laughs> up in the next 10 minutes, Ash. Yeah. <laughs> but that, I mean, that part of it. Um, the human part of it is real. The it's emotional real. part of it is real. The attachment but, that you feel but is for real. What, but for what we like to do, mm-hmm. um, it's great to have those kind of players. Because it's when you tell a story, you need a star. You need a heroine. You need a superhero. You need those people, which is why Keith Bullock was so valuable to what we did all those years. Because, I mean, when you, when you pulled the Mr. Monday Night thing in 2007, you gave us the greatest storyline. <laughs> I, I mean, it was just, it was fantastic. It's like wrestling. Like professional wrestling, it's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it was he, a storyline. I mean, let's put it this way: you you were the gr- you were Stone Cold Steve Austin. I like that. You <laughs> where <are> my beers, <laughs> <laughs> but you really were because you could be the good guy and the bad guy at the same time, which was mm-hmm. fun. Um, but you're, I I don't know. I just well, I've just seen things throughout the day from people, and I know how much they care, and I just. I just don't want anybody calling them foolish or less than for not seeing the big picture. The The big picture's true, it's too. It's being seen, yeah. though. I feel like the big picture is being seen. Right. Yeah. You know, like, it's unfortunately not the picture everybody wants to see, but if you are really in tune to it. Sure. You can see it. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, we need to get a break, don't we? Yes. Yes, we, we do. Sure do. Okay. Uh, we've got more coming up with Keith Bullock. I want to talk about Jerome Baker when we get back for a second. Um because I want to pull on your linebacker knowledge mm-hmm. some. Interesting player. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about that and a lot more. Amy Wells is here. Keith Bullock is here. I'm Mike Keith. This is Titans Tonight, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. Titans Tonight, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. Amy Wells, Mike Keith, Keith Bullock from Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. So glad to have you with us tonight. Lots going on as uh, the Titans have reportedly uh, made two trades today. Yes. They have reportedly dealt DeAndre Hopkins to Kansas City for a conditional five that can become a fourth-round pick if he plays 60% of the offensive snaps for the Chiefs the rest of the way and if they make the Super Bowl. That's what the reports say. Mm -hmm. And then the Titans have dealt – Linebacker Ernest Jones to Seattle, reportedly, uh, for Jerome Baker, who's a veteran linebacker, and then a fourth-round pick. Now, here's what's interesting. And this, Keith Bullock, this is where I want to go first. So, Ernest Jones is playing for Tennessee last Sunday in Buffalo. This Sunday, Buffalo goes to Seattle. He's going to play against these guys, reportedly, two Sundays in a row. <laughs> now, you, you, you never did that, right? Never no. played. Okay. Th- no. So, what do you – will he be more ready to play? Based? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking. I don't even – 
I mean, okay. is that a dream come true for a the only, the only thing he has to do is get caught up on where he needs to be, and he's veteran enough that, like, you know, obviously he's in shape. Like, he just needs to know his gaps and where his drops are, and he's not necessarily um, – a pass coverage linebackers so they can make it really easy on them if they just blitz them you know what i'm saying like um yeah that's kind of how the titans kind of um worked them in in the beginning you saw the first game he was here he played right. about 20 30 snaps but they were effective snaps because they just had him going fast they took the thinking out of it for him because he's a good player so Let's do that, and then next week we can worry about teaching you the details of the defense. But for in all intents and purposes of this week, um, he's probably just going to be playing C-ball, hit ball. <laughs> <laughs> but he's tuned in to what um, Buffalo is doing, so it could be an instance where he sees or recognizes a formation. And he's like, man, I missed this play last week. I'm not going to miss it this week. Miss the math problem yeah. on the quiz. Yeah, yeah, not exactly. missing it on the test. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that, that's pretty cool. That's second a pretty, chance. That's, that's a pretty awesome. cool um, situation. Now, if, he, if he's a defensive player of the game, we know why. Be out there with Terrell Dotson, who is from Franklin. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Huh. Let's go, Terrell. Terrell Dotson, yes. Absolutely. He's a good dude, Darrell Dotson. Yeah. You know uh, what? I will say Okay. this uh, Middle Tennessee area puts out a, a, a solid, like a big amount of professional athletes. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. um, Now? Yeah. yeah and now, it, mm -hmm. it wasn't always, it wasn't like, always like mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, because I know, well, I will say since pretty much I've been here and maybe been in tune, let's just say maybe like since 2008 or something like that. Um, but, yeah, there's like a lot of – ballers that come from here like i go home and you know back to new york i'm like oh yeah he's from tennessee hey he's from brentwood mookie mookie bets mookie lived bets. across the street from tank williams grew up across the street from tank williams ain't no telling what we was doing over there but him and his <laughs> poor family lived down the street from us <laughs> that's a huge titans fan mookie yeah bets. no he actually told me the story he thought it was my house i was like oh no nah, that was tanks he was like yeah no nah, yeah I, my parent, I guess, however, yeah. you know, went down. He just was aware that a couple of Titans lived in his in his area, which was cool. Yeah, he's <laughs> so, something else. All right, so I want to tell. Sent my Mets home. Uh, <laughs> I want to tell the story about the linebacker that the Titans reportedly got. Yes. In the uh, Ernest Jones deal, and that's Jerome Baker. Now, here's the funny thing about Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker's first ever game was the longest game ever played for the Miami Dolphins. He's the third-round pick of Miami in 2018. He played in the season opener in 2018 against the Titans, and he had six tackles in that game. Well, he had plenty of time to he get had six plenty tackles. Of time. Yeah. He, was an, he was an early third-round pick. He was the ninth pick of the third round in 2018 by the Dolphins. He ended up spending six years with the Dolphins. After his first three years, they gave him a three-year, $39 million contract. And so they liked him. He had 300 tackle seasons. Mm -hmm. He played extensively. Um, talking about a guy who didn't miss any time until uh, 2023 when he had a knee injury uh, that kept him out for the, for the last four games of the season. Still played in 13 games. This year, he ends up in Seattle. He missed two games with a hamstring injury, 37 tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble. Now – Here's the interesting thing. Dolphins waived him on March 6th, salary cap casualty, before free agency started. Yeah. So they waive him. So he takes a visit to? Nashville? Nashville. Really? Eight days after he's been waived. And we're thinking, not, not the football people, they were – Doing, they actually, they're do, they're, they're doing, doing it, but the things. people upstairs, like me, who are just like, whoa, you know, um, <laughs> how you spend your day? Yeah, I, I do that a lot. <laughs> but I'm I'm really fired up because I'm thinking we're getting Jerome Baker. We're gonna have Jerome Baker, and we're gonna have Kenneth Murray, and this is gonna be great. And Jerome Baker is this six two, two hundred thirty two pound guy who's good in pass coverage, and he does have twenty three and a half career sacks, and. I mean, there, there are a lot of things that, that he can do. He's a little different player from Ernest Jones. Um, Ernest Jones is more of the go-forward thumper. He's more of the, 
you know, he's kind of more of a pass cover side to side, a little different player. But anyway, so this is, you know, this is March 14th, and this is who we're going to end up doing. Very exciting. So Jerome Baker doesn't sign while he's here. And I'm like, oh, mm. well, okay. Well, maybe he's going to just take another visit and then come back. And I think that's what the Titans sort of hope. So he goes to Seattle. And who does he pick to sign a one-year contract with? Seattle. Seattle. Hmm. So well, he was almost a Titan, mm-hmm. and now he reportedly is a Titan. I'm telling you, what's meant for you, there you go. will always find you. Yes. Well, he's extensively scouted. Like you read off, uh, he has 37 tackles to um, – you know, Ernest Jones is 44. Right. Uh, obviously, you say um, Ernest is more, you know, the downhill guy, whereas, you know, Murray's a downhill guy as well. Well, that's mm-hmm. it. That, you know? the, the feeling some people had was that putting a guy like Baker with a guy like Murray would be the perfect pairing, that you didn't really want two of the same thing. But I mean, listen. No, not, I'm not knocking Ernest Jones. No, played, no, he played very well. Yeah, absolutely. It's really what you want and what you need as a defense. You know, if you are, if you have, and can you know get something for uh, Ernest Jones, who was a downhill thumper, similar to Kenneth Murray, and replace that with someone that is a tackler, but also is good in space and in coverage. Why not get that? You're getting um, an extra underneath cover guy, and you're getting potential. You're getting a draft pick for your next year. Well, yeah. and part of it is financial. Uh, I mean, Jerome Baker is making a lot more money than Ernest Jones is because Ernest Jones is in the last year of his rookie contract. Jerome Baker was a free mm. agent on the market, so there's a different price point that is what adds. I'm just surmising. But normally, that's what adds in the draft pick, not because you're saying one the value. player, right? Yeah. Not that you're saying one player is so much better than the other. It's a, it's not like we're the Titans are taking a lesser guy necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's a price point. You're yeah. you're taking money. You're helping Seattle in that way, and you're giving them a player in earnest who is incredibly. So it's compensation. It's compensation for for dollars. Right. Draft so, picks are currency in the same well, way and, that money is and, currency. And salary cap room is currency. And yep. if you're giving up some of your salary cap room to free them up to potentially do something else, because the trade deadline isn't until November 5th. Correct. So my question in, in all of this big – Wind up, and I apologize for that. No. Uh, how much can Baker help the Titans quickly? Um, that's tough to say. Defense is playing well, but they're going against um, you know um, two running backs in Jameer Gibbs and Montgomery. That um, you know they're very, very, very elite, especially this year. So coming in, learning a new scheme or learning a new defense this fast, I wouldn't put too much on him. Um, If he's able to go out there and make some plays and, you know, keep everything intact, um, what I mean by that, Titans haven't really been giving up too many explosive plays in the run minus that Green Bay game. Um, If they can come in and play great run defense, Titans typically play good run defense. I don't think that um, they'll miss a beat. But that's to be said and to be determined because it's it's very simple. Look, I remember – you know, my first game with the Giants, and I was out of my gap. Like, I was just lined up one gap over, and, you know, D'Angelo, whoever the running back was at that time, you know, took the ball 40 yards, and that's how fast things happen in the NFL. You're out of your gap by one step. They hit it, and they're gone 40. And, you know, that was the only big run we gave up that day, but that was my MA. So in this league, it's as simple as not being in the gap you're supposed to be in. So if they're gapped up right, I'm sure, look, he's playing behind, you know, Big Jeff and Tavondre and, you know, Harold Landry. They got some dogs on defense. So like I say, he's going to have to um, – they're going to – they're it's just going to happen. You know, they're going to have to because there are some alphas on this Titans defense that, you know, if he's not playing up to speed, they'll, I'm sure they'll let him know. That's how it works. The free agency story is interesting to me 
And what I'm flashing back to is, do you remember when the coaching staff kind of first came in? They're getting ready to go into free agency. They're getting ready to go into kind of the pre-draft evaluation process. And they're talking about their kind of... uh, their outlines of what a Titan is in every single position. The fact that Jerome Ma- Baker is someone that they brought in for a free agent visit says to me that they've known that this guy could be a Titan. Oh, they clearly. have an idea of what he can do, how he could fit into this defense. Denard was here then the same way he's here right now. And Frank Bush was here then, yes. the linebacker coach. Exactly. Frank Bush was his linebacker coach in 2018, his rookie year in Miami. So they know how to put him in positions to be successful, even if it's not having the entire defense installed in his brain right the second right now. They know how to utilize him, and they know what he does well, hopefully to put him in positions where he can be successful right away. All right, so Keith, I have another one for you. So I, I mentioned he missed two games with a hamstring. One of the games he missed for Seattle was week four at Detroit. <laughs> All right, so he didn't play in that game. Yet, I would imagine a guy who is – and he was back the next week. So are you still engaged enough at that point as a player that you're going to pick up things in meetings? What are, I guess what I'm asking is what are you doing? He, yeah. And was he doing something most likely that he could – theoretically apply this week to getting ready for Detroit now that he's reportedly a tight. Yeah, I mean, definitely if um, he was in tune that week, um, it just depends on since he came back so fast, it could definitely be one of those situations where he had his treatments early and then, you know, he was maybe questionable all week. So if you're on the questionable list, you're always going to be in the meetings and things of that nature. So he could definitely have retained some of that game plan um, from the Detroit game back in week four. Uh, so that would definitely be helpful to him, um, especially getting into this system, but having some knowledge on what they like to do. So you're like double studying. So, okay, to answer your question, he was doubtful in week three, but in week four he was questionable. Yeah, so he mm-hmm. definitely was involved. When you're questionable, you know, you typically – it's a regular week of practice for you. They see where you're at um, by Wednesday or Thursday. They're gonna make. They're gonna know and probably make that decision on Friday. All right, we need to get a break. And then, did you want to say anything else? No, I think a break is a, a break great is idea right now. Okay. I think that's a really good so time. We're having some good, we're having <laughs> yeah. some good discussion here tonight. We are. Hope people are listening or watching. I hope they're engaged and enjoying <laughs> Titans tonight with Keith Bullock, <laughs> presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. <laughs> Coming up on Sunday, the Titans will go to Detroit to play the Lions. The Lions are 5-1. and one. If the playoffs started today, they would be the number one seed in the NFC. Wow. Wow, wow. Here, here's a good one. The Lions have not started 6-1 and one or better since 1956. That was a while ago. That's nearly, what, 70 years ago? 19, they started six and one. They finished nine and three. Their head coach was Buddy Parker. Mm. See if you know this name. Their quarterback was Bobby Lane. Mm-mm. I don't know that That's name. That's one of the all time greats. Oh, I go know ahead. Bobby Lane. Good job. Hall of Famers Yale Larry and Jack Christensen each had eight interceptions. So it's been that long for the Lions. Wow. That's a long time. That's quite a while. Yeah. I, play, I remember when they had bags on their face. <laughs> 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 Yo, that's crazy. Yeah. Now they do that to the other team. Now right? I got yeah. homeboys that were like, my man George Foster was on yeah. the 0-16 yeah. um, team. Like That was like during my playing career. Like You I played against them. Yeah. Man, I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't feel bad, but... <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that That's long ago. That's a long season. Because, oh, yeah. like, yeah. Four, a four-win season and a five-win season is extremely long. But you got those five. Those wins you came those at moments. some point. 
you felt during good. the sea. You had those yeah. five evenings <laughs> mm-hmm. throughout the six months of the season that you were just elated that your hard work paid off. Yeah. You know, the other five, I mean, the other 15 to 11, you just don't turn on the TV. I never put a brown paper bag over my head to no. go to Kroger, but, That's you know, I definitely wore my hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, J- Jameson Williams is reportedly facing a t- reportedly mm. is reportedly facing a two game suspension for violating the NFL's performance enhancing substances policy. And Adam Schefter said it. I don't believe it. Wait, just <laughs> two? Yes. Interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't know, and it, I mean, he's not really denying it wildly, although he's reportedly. In the um, appeal Process. stage. Mm. Isn't that usually like four to six? Well, he's had a four before. He missed four games last oh, year. He's for- habitual. So how is he this only on. two? Hang on. Hang on. He did Hang it. On. <laughs> he was suspended for four games in 2023 for violating the NFL's gambling policy. Oh. Uh, something different. Now, he can run run, as oh, Coach yeah. Mack likes to say. Well, nah, yeah, he's a big I mean, boy, too. Yeah, he's a good player. You got to bring it. 17 catches for 361 yards and three touchdowns. Now, Amon Ra St. Brown is. Beast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 39 catches, 401 yards, and four touchdowns. One touchdown in each of his last four games, longest streak in the NFL. He's been like that since like high school because I used to do those Nike camps and he's always been like known he's that guy. Well, you know, like, his dad, really? his dad yeah. was Mr. Olympia. Yeah, and then, and like he. Yeah. What is. I don't even know what that is. Well, that's a, he's a weight body bodybuilder. Body but yeah. like uh, to Ooh. the extent that, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger was Lou Ferrigno, the Hulk, and yeah. wow. people of that They have, they have an interesting like family story because his brother's in the league too and his dad like. Equinin. Equinin. Equinemius, Equinemius St. Brown. But the, but the interesting thing is the dad's name is John Brown. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. But he decided that it, he says that if you haven't watched Receiver, yeah. the Peyton Manning series. Yeah, you know I series, haven't yet. Mm-hmm. The second, you know, that quarterback, and then the second year was Receiver. Yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown is part of this. And the dad lays out why he named – his children the way that he did and why he had a plan for them he had a plan they started working out when they were five years old and i mean it's a it's a whole thing so this this is dad is the driving force i mean obviously they want to play but like dad was the oh, one no that question yeah like a, it's like a venus serena, yeah that's like, what i was right. gonna say I mean, same, same theory as venus yeah. and serena um mother is i tried that it didn't work <laughs> it didn't <laughs> You have a good volleyball player. I tried that one day. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it was like one one practice. I was like, eh, yeah, that's out. Uh, <laughs> this is, is over. Out. So, I mean, but it's like every black dad that has a daughter. Everybody <laughs> thinks they're going to be Venus and Serena. <laughs> <laughs> well, mom is from Germany, and so Amon Ra and the siblings all talk to her in German, and she speaks English. Wow! But that's he is fluent in German. Whoa. I mean, it's a it's fascinating, and most importantly for the purposes of our conversation, he can really play. Yeah, yeah, he can definitely play. The German thing is cool, though. I think this is a good. I, I like to see this matchup. You know, I know Snead is dealing with the quad or whatever, yeah. but I think um, so. What on Sundays if he goes out there, he's a pro. Like he's gonna be ready. You know, um, you know, I like to see. This matchup for sure. Final mm-hmm. break, and then we're back to wrap up Titans tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. All right, Titans and the Lions Sunday at Ford Field. The Titans have won the last six matchups in this series. The last time the Lions beat this franchise, 1995. Great year, Dang. 95. Barry Sanders was out there. Jeff, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Fisher's yeah. first year. Wow. Wow, wow. Jeff Fisher's first year as head coach of the Houston Oilers. Uh, hard to believe, but with the fact that the uh, Detroit Lions are in the NFC and the Titans are in the AFC, this is only the 14th overall meeting. But we've got them. 10-3. to 3. Yep. 10-3, to 3, so want to keep it uh, keep, keep it going. Keep it going for sure. Keith Bullock, thank you for your insight tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you. Have mm-hmm. a great trip to Detroit. We're ready. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Amy Wells, thank you. Of course. 
For everybody associated with Titans Radio and for our friends at Pinnacle Financial Partners, Mike Keith says good night, everybody. <laughs>